Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's Unseen video. So much to go through. Let's get straight into it. Here, Jim has said Rise of the Jade Simps is here. And it is true, Jade Cargill is now signed to SmackDown. She put a message out a couple of hours ago saying a storm is coming What's up, SmackDown? So Jade Cargill is the latest signee for SmackDown. And look at this. This is Rhea Ripley's reaction to Dominic Mysterio helping Santos Escobar. Doesn't feel like Rhea knew that this was going to happen. She's got a bit of a thinking emoji face. And uh, we will hear from Dominic later, who actually responds to this tweet. Uh, and it's quite interesting as well. Uh, Asuka is physically cleared, says the boulder. And it is true. She was on the show. Her movement looked good. Uh, there didn't seem to be any problem. She was dancing away in the entranceway. She got involved in the match as well. So it looks like Asuka's all good. And honestly, I wasn't expecting that. We know that there was a lot of concern about her movement last week. Rumors were she'd been for scans. Rumors were she had a broken ankle. Rumors were Dakota was going to cover for her at WrestleMania. None of that appears to be true. Maybe she did go for scans, but certainly them scans appear to have come back all good because all the signs right now is that Asuka is A-OK -okay to go for WrestleMania. Jade Cargill said, are you guys ready? This is going to be some good shiz. So uh, there we go. Jade Cargill is excited. So is Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis tweeting out the graphics saying bag secured. Jade Cargill was the bag because everyone wanted her. Raw wanted her. Even NXT wanted her. But uh, it's SmackDown that has got her. He didn't fumble the bag. He secured the bag, and he got one of the hottest free agents uh, that's, uh, w, that was floating around in WWE. As we said, she could have gone to Raw. She could have gone to NXT, but uh, he's managed to get the deal done. She's on her way to SmackDown. So next week, we've got Kevin Owens and Randy Orton taking on Pretty Deadly. We've got Jade Cargill's first appearance as a SmackDown superstar. We've got Bianca Belair taking on Dakota Kai. That'll be fun. And then, of course, we've got Street Profits against Grayson Waller, Austin Theory. And we've also got New Catch Republic taking on Legada del Fantasma. So the winners of those two matches will go to WrestleMania. I'm thinking it'll be Grayson and Austin Theory. Other side, a little bit trickier, but I think I'm going to go New Catch Republic. I think that Legada del Fantasma, LWO are in a feud. Doesn't really make much sense to have Legada del Fantasma going after tag belts. Uh, certainly when you think New Catch Republic don't have anything else going on. And then Street Profits are in a feud with uh, the Final Testament. And so Grayson and Theory, they need to get onto the WrestleMania cards. This would make sense for getting them into uh, that match. So that's why I think it's going to go that way. Uh, Sports Keed are asking thoughts on this angle. So here's some images. I thought you'd enjoy some screenshots from this moment from SmackDown where LA Knight goes round AJ Styles' house. I really enjoyed this. I like the dash cam footage. I like the body cam footage. My only criticism of this is I wanted it longer. I wanted... AJ and LA Knight to brawl a bit more, maybe fight in the front room, uh, fight in the garage, maybe use a couple of things that are lying around, like a rake or whatever, right? Uh, I wanted a bit more action. And uh, we kind of got a little bit of action and then obviously the police arrive. So, you know, I, I don't know that this is going to be remembered as like a vintage moment, uh, a classic all time segment, but a lot of praise for this. A lot of people enjoyed it all the same. And as I said, my only criticism is that it didn't go longer. So uh, yeah, it was fun. Santos Escobar said there, I finished my story. Dead the king. Long live the emperor Santos Escobar. 
So there we go. Santos Escobar celebrating, if you will, the fact that he's managed to get past Rey Mysterio. LA Knight was shown getting arrested on SmackDown for showing up at AJ Styles' home and attacking him. Commentary said that AJ Styles didn't press charges. LA Knight was released from jail. So I included that just in case it might have passed you by that uh, he didn't press charges. LA Knight has been released. Um, and apparently that was mentioned on commentary. Uh, Sports Kida Wrestling just pointing out that the wise man was lurking in the background. I think we all saw it. They couldn't have made it much more obvious, could they? He was right in the middle uh, and you could see him uh, very, very clearly. But uh, yes, he uh, gets his phone. I think there's a bit of a call Roman Reigns um, as we were heading towards that face to face. And also people commenting on Cody and Nick Aldis confronting each other this is really cool because if you go back to all in right the show that they did before aew existed um it was cody versus nick aldis for the nwa uh, world's heavyweight championship so it's just kind of really fun to see these two old foes old friends together on camera in wwe imagine if you was to go back to all in uh which you know uh, i think was that like 2019 if you used to go back to that or 2018 and say that both cody and nick Aldis would be in wwe together in a few years time like you might not quite believe that but here we are it's amazing Talking of amazing, look at this. Kenny, for your thoughts, said, I love that they are cutting to the crowd every time they show that promo. Seeing the fireflies again is making me emotional. So there we go. Bray Wyatt becoming a mortal documentary, April 1st. And uh, every time they show it, they do cut to the crowds and the crowds always have got their phones out. The fireflies always in... Uh, in the uh, arenas, and it's a great shot. Dominic, here we go. This is his response to Rhea Ripley. He said, I'm sorry, mommy, but I hate him. <laughs> Talking about his dad, of course. I did what had to be done. So I don't think Rhea knew that Dominic was doing this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry mommy, but I hate him. Uh, backstage, look, Crispy Wrestling said, I don't know why, but it got a laugh out of me when Bianca and Naomi walked by Cody. I love this. I really love this. I wish that we were seeing more superstars in their own stories walking past other superstars that were in their stories so cody was here on smackdown he was signing a load of stuff for the fans obviously getting ready for his face to face with roman later and you've got bianca and naomi walking by because they're in their own world you know they're dealing with damage control and everything that's going on with them it's just brilliant watching i want to see more stories sort of overlap you know, I want to see more conversations in the background as people are doing stuff in the foreground and like just more superstars kind of on screen at the same time, not getting in each other's way, just little things in the background. I think that's one thing that Bray really changed with how I watch wrestling is that I'm constantly scanning in the background, constantly looking for any little bits and bobs and obviously you didn't need to look too hard to spot cody here but um yeah i'd like to see a bit more of that to be honest here was uh Asuka just 23 minutes ago we are bringing you some of the freshest latest updates so here is an image of Asuka. she certainly seems to be implying that everything is good so uh great to see her on the show tonight Humble Wrestling said apparently Cody Rhodes gave away both of his shoes after SmackDown. Now, at the time of recording this, I don't know if that's true. This is the only thing that I've seen talking about that. So we'll have to see if footage comes out, fan footage or whatever, over the coming hours. But um, yeah, apparently that wouldn't surprise me. We have seen footage of him giving away his shoes before. Uh, right, we've got an exclusive interview here with Carrion and Scarlett. Carrion, 
losing it, man. Look at this. Going absolutely mental. Just really losing it. Pushing things. Through. Look how angry he is. So uh, I wrote down what he said. Uh, Scarlett did most of the talking. She said, look, be smart about this. Like, do you want to get fired again? She said, what do you and Bobby have in common? And she's like really staring at him. Uh, what do you need to do to make Bobby give you what you want? And uh, Carrion sort of thinks about it. And then he's like, well, Bobby wants what I want. And he starts laughing and he says, this is why I love you. And uh, they sort of start dancing and whatever. And um, that we don't really get an answer. But um, Carrion has gone from being enraged and upset to if we fast forward more towards the end, you can see they're like sort of dancing together here. She's giving him a little kiss and uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of happy by the end of it. So clearly he's got a plan again, helped by Scarlet. I think that plan might be interfering in the Street Profits match next week. Maybe attacking Bobby backstage, distracting the prophets. Everything says that we're building to Final Testament against Bobby's group at WrestleMania. So that's my that's what I'm working to. That what I, that's what I think the plan is. Uh, then we heard from Dakota. There wasn't really much here. Dakota got told that she's got a match with Bianca next week. Uh, and she laughed and she said, I've got something you don't have, Bianca, and that's a crew. Uh, she says, like, she's really looking forward to next week. I want to play this as well, just for one reason, right? She loves it. I just want to show you the little punches that Kyrie Sane does as she walks away. <laughs> It's my favorite part of this. So she's very confident. Yeah. Uh, look at Kyrie. Just watch. And I love the little punches in a second that she delivers to Byron. Here we go. She looks at Byron. They start to walk away. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. I love it. Do it again. Do it again. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, she is. She's like a cat. She's like the most human cat I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I don't know if cats do that, but uh, do it again. Uh, so here, they're about to go. Pop him. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> I love it, man. It's brilliant. All right, and here is Santos and uh, Dominic. So Byron said, like, oh, I thought no one was allowed to get involved. And Santa said, well, they said not LWO and not Legada del Fantasma. They didn't say anything about Judgment Day. And um, Byron said, well, isn't it cheating? Like, there's not really much honor in beating Ray with some outside interference. And Dominic jumps in and basically says a win is a win. Right, and these two laugh and they walk off together. Dominic did also say that Judgment Day run Raw and SmackDown. I did wonder if Santos might have an issue with that, considering I'm sure he would uh, Legada del Fantasma run SmackDown, but he, I think he was just so happy for getting the win over Rey Mysterio. He's, he's not bothered. So this is quite interesting. I don't quite know where this is going, to be honest. I don't quite know where this is going to lead, but we do need to get Ray on the card. We do need to get Santos on the card. We do need to get uh, Dominic on the card. And we know that Andrade is around, and there is a few thoughts there may be a tag match. But equally, we could do LWO against Legado del Fantasma. We could also do Santos against Ray, like a rematch at wrestlemania so there's quite a few ways that we can go with this so we'll have to wait and see that was the smackdown folder let's go to the roman folder and we really have to move man because we got so much stuff oh. so there was obviously a massive interview with uh roman there wasn't loads of talking points to come out of it just you know nothing monumental but we got a few quotes so uh wrestle ops when asked about his future roman reigns stated that he's just scratching the surface he's still experimenting and figuring stuff out he's got so much more to do so much history left to make and he doesn't see it ever ending I, I gotta be honest some of these i think are just answers to build up the wrestlemania match you know like i'm sure he does have a lot more to give but this is clearly the biggest phase of his career 
And I don't know that he's ever going to go back to work in a full-time schedule. Like, I think he's pretty much part-time for life now. So, you know, him talking about being 38, still and have so much to give. I I'm not expecting him to ever go back to a full-time schedule now. He's made his money. He's balancing his family life with uh, work. He's reached that upper echelon where he now can command this sort of schedule. You know, the ball is very much in his court. I mean, a WWE going to let him leave and go to AEW or something? No. So they'll allow him to do what he wants, really. So I do think some of these answers you have to take with a little pinch of salt. I think some of them are his way of just kind of building up uh, WrestleMania, you know. Uh, so he took a shot at CM Punk as well. He said, I'm not one of them people that is, once I got there, it wasn't what I expected. I'm not like CM Punk, where I got to the top of the mountain. Oh, it's not what I expect. I'm going to about it. No, once you reach your goals, enjoy the dream. This is what you have been working for. That's exactly what I'm doing. So, and a bit more here for me. That was uh, the end game. Let me just make the final statement. Put the stamp of approval. Seal the deal. I beat The Rock. Ain't nobody ever questioning what I've done here. And Cody took that from me. We're such a close family. And we handle things the right way. He took that from me. He took that storybook ending. You ain't ever been here half the time. You just got here. You literally just got here two years ago. So that's Roman's thoughts about Cody ruining his storybook ending with The Rock. Uh, he also called Michael Cole a big D rider. This was when the interview, I believe, was talking about how Michael Cole kept bigging up John Cena and uh, he just called him a big D rider. And I think that was it, really, to be honest. Um, Roman, with a few words, we can play this. Like the wise man said one-on-one -on -one. the only number one face to face with the greatest number two of all time Cody Rhodes see how smacked out of that so that was uh, Roman arriving and obviously we know he wouldn't be on his own uh, Fade Watson, thank you. Fade said, I love that Cody brought up that him and his brother beating Roman and Seth to become the new tag champs. It was a great callback. It is great when they kind of go back in history and like really dig into moments because it really works in this story. The Shield was so dominant. I mean, you are going back to one of the greatest factions we have ever seen. And that is the faction that introduced the world really to Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. And so who was the team that first beat them? Who was the team that was able to stop one of, if not the greatest WWE factions of all time? It was the Rhodes. And that is such, I think, a, a powerful, interesting moment, you know, that can that's easily forgotten about and not spoken about. But um they stopped the shields. And so now you have to ask the question, can Cody stop Roman? He's tried and failed last year. Can he do it this year? I, I love going back to history, obviously when it works, when it fits. It's not always going to fit, but that is too good to ignore, man. Too good to ignore. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to play this. I really hope we don't get hit with uh, any issues, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this because people were talking about this on the stream. <laughs> My goat got cooked by a fan. It's this woman here. She's the one that says what you're about to hear, right? Let's play it. You need a group full of strangers to acknowledge you a little bit, Joe? <laughs> I don't know if you quite heard it. Do you need a room full of strangers to acknowledge your ass? Here we go. It's this woman here. It doesn't look like it's her, but it is her. You need a room full of strangers to acknowledge your little bitch ass? How does the microphone pick her up so well? 
How does the microphone pick her up so well? I have no idea. I'm guessing Roman did hear it, right? But they're just obviously carrying on. But uh, how did that come across as well and as clear as what it did? Amazing. And uh, Roman Reigns uh, SCN said my goat got cooked by a fan. Look at this. Why was Heyman striking a pose with the belt? Because if you can, then you do. And he can, and so he does. Uh, so there we go. That is a power pose in it right there. That is a power pose. I tell you what, if they gave out plaques for the Hall of Fame rather than rings like they used to, he could even do that with the plaque at the Hall of Fame. <laughs> that is a power pose right there. Looking awesome. Fade said, uh, new CGI graphics for our tribal chief. To be honest with you, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I can't remember what his CGI used to look like. This to me looks the same. I mean, maybe they changed the shirt or summer. I really don't know. But it, it looks the same to me. But uh, Fade's saying it's new CGI. I did scan the comments just to see if anyone else was saying that it's new. No one. Everyone was like, oh, it's... Some people are like, oh, it's cool. And other people are like, still looks like ass. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, here, look, an hour ago, Cody Rhodes. Dot, dot, dot. Bottom of the ninth that was such a famous saying wasn't it when they spoke about what innings are we in now and um now cody is making it clear we're in the bottom of the ninth so uh this this story is about to come to an end so that was smackdown that was roman let's go to wwe shall we so mitchell thank you the west borough baptist church has announced plans to picket wwe raw due to the janelle grant lawsuits the west borough baptist church have announced that they will picket the 29th of april raw in kansas city so uh there we go that's uh, a bit of pr that uh, wwe definitely don't need uh, and this is strange as well. Vince McMahon's Netflix documentary is still planned for 2024. I believe this was courtesy of Dave Meltzer, who basically said he hadn't heard of any changes. And so he's still under the impression that this documentary is going to be coming out in 2024. Wouldn't shock me if it doesn't. Wouldn't shock me if... It's just not been made official that it's been scrapped or postponed or whatever. But I can't see how you can do this in 2024. I mean, not with an active case going on. There's just too much noise around Vince and there's too much raw feeling as well, you know. So I just don't see how they can do that. Uh, Wrestle Purist said WWE talent was told that because the company was publicly traded, the wishes of TKO management was to be TVPG, right? The feeling was that if The Rock was on board, if anything, he should be the one following the rules, setting the example. So we know there's a lot of upset that The Rock can do what he wants and everyone else has to operate under different rules. Um I mean, for me, uh, I just, I don't, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the bad language. It's definitely not a direction that I'm looking to go in, uh, or I think WWE should go in. I think that uh, they are a PG product. There are young kids that go to their shows. I think the odd word here, there, very rarely for impact is fine, but there's been loads of bad language in the build up to WrestleMania. Now, I'm not a square, right? Before you have a go at me. I'm not a square. Yeah, I'm hip and cool. I can use bad words, right? I know them all. I know them all. I know all the bad words. Learned them oh, ages ago. So, you know what I mean? I'm not square. But um, I just think there's, no, there's not really a need for it. I don't think it makes promos better. It doesn't, it doesn't elevate promos. It might just give it a little punch, you know, if you sparingly like one bad word at the end. But um, it's been loads, man. It's been too much. So for me, yeah, I I'd like to see it all kind of brought back in line. But I'm not bothered about uh, The Rock doing stuff that other people can't do. The Rock's a heel. 
You're not meant to like him. If he's doing stuff that others can't do and that upsets you, good. He's a heel. Good. <laughs> so if you don't like him, good. You're not meant to. Right, Wrestle Purist said, nothing is official, but the belief right now is that Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker, John Cena will have something at WrestleMania 40 in some form. At press time, there is no creative locked in. Right, so there we go. Is there much else to this? It is a well-guarded secret. There's no creative, and it's a well-guarded secret. So there we go. Right, uh, Nathan Frazier is so good, officials are concerned about his opponents being able to keep up. Him and Axiom are drawing praise for their speed and agility. What I would say about this is they are fast, they are agile, they are impressive. You do have to just be a bit worried about the fact that we know that there's a big criticism against the Bucks for going fast and doing lots of moves. And you do let the storytelling aspect of the match pass you by. Work in a match a million miles an hour, hitting every move under the sun. Appeals to some people, but does not appeal to other people. And I think you've just got to be careful to not let the storytelling pass you by. Like the moves that you are landing should be having an effect and the person needs time to be able to sell those moves so that you know there's an emotional connection to the match otherwise we're just watching someone spamming every move they know so i i, I think that he is very talented i think that he is amazingly quick amazingly agile amazingly skilled but i hope someone is having that conversation with him Otherwise, he may turn into another Ricochet, where Ricochet can do a lot of moves, and he can do them quickly, and he's very agile, but he ain't world champion, right? And um, he's someone which is around the mid card at best. And for someone like Ricochet, you would really expect more. And I would just be worried that Nathan uh, Frazier would be kind of going down that road, so... Uh, WWE star Bailey has commented on Mercedes Monet's AEW debut at Big Business. Mercedes is the best. I wouldn't be here without her. She's done so much for me. Even after she was done with WWE, she's been there for me in my big moments. So I know I need to be there for her. And uh, she goes on to say that when uh, she found out that like uh, Mercedes moment was going to be on a Wednesday, well, that's a day they normally have off. So she knew that she could be there for her. So Bailey just uh, really singing the praises as you would expect for Mercedes Monet. Uh, Crispy Wrestling said just announced for WWE World a Bray Wyatt documentary panel Whoa, featuring Jojo, Big E, Natalia, Taylor Rotunda and more right? That's on the 6th. And then there's a 2K24 tournament featuring Bailey, Xavier Woods, R-Truth, Zelina Vega, and more. That is on April 4th. So loads of stuff being announced for WWE World. It really does look like so much fun. If you're going to WrestleMania, how are you not going to go to WWE World as well? It definitely seems like you, you need to everyone tagged me or not everyone but i would say pretty much everyone in the world tagged me in this graphic so much excitement about it people absolutely love this thing so uh old school wrestlemania poster from wrestling six and uh it's it's brilliant it's a really really great looking poster but uh cody retweeted it with uh eyes emoji seven hours ago so uh love that I think that's uh, really, really cool. Uh, they just don't do posters like this. This is really old, really old kind of style poster. So uh, we've seen lots of like remakes of old WrestleMania posters and old box art and whatever, but done in that WrestleMania 40 style. So uh, yeah, this is great. Looks really, really cool. Right, that was uh, WWE, was it? Was that WWE? That was WWE. Let's go to NXT. Uh, so here we go. Look, do you remember yesterday? Carmella Hayes said, you nice, but I don't work that far down the cards. Well, Ava saw 
that interaction. She said, let me see what I can do. And actually, the match was made tonight. Uh, the NXT, was it Sanford? The house show, we did get Javon Evans taking on Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo saying, Ite, tonight I'll meet you halfway. Melo versus Javon, yes, NXT Sanford. Hashtag first time ever i saw lots of people saying please someone take footage of this i haven't seen any footage of this the only thing i've seen is an entrance picture of carmelo so carmelo being in the ring at nxt sanford but you can't see javon evans and there's no footage of him wrestling a lot of people are excited for this because javon is only about 19 he is this massive future prospect he's meant to be like the next carmelo so seeing these two in the ring First time ever, as Carmelo says, would be something really special. So if we can find any footage on that, I'll try and put that into tomorrow's Unseen. And uh, here's Nathan Frazier responding to uh, that comment from earlier. Damn, sucks to be them. Hashtag never slow down. So uh, that's a fun little response from Nathan Frazier. Now we've got the Slammies. So this was big news today. So Alex Bloomfield, shout out to you, Sean Ross Sapp. The Slammies are back. So this is brilliant. Love the Slammies. It's going to be hosted by Kathy Kelly and Big E alongside special guest appearances from additional WWE superstars. The Slammies, the Fan Choice Awards, will celebrate the very best achievements across the WWE universe over the past year. It says voting is open and will run until March 27th. Uh, WWE and Fanatics events, the live and special event division of Fanatics recently announced details for WWE Worlds, a five-day interactive fan experience that I really want to go to. Uh, Pennsylvania Convention Center, WWE World at WrestleMania will feature a variety of immersive experiences for fans, including a central main stage that will host roundtable discussions with top superstars, 2K24 shows showdown gaming tournaments live podcast recordings live memorabilia and autograph sales through fanatics live and the largest superstore in wrestlemania history the event will also feature exclusive merchandise meet and greets and immersive exhibits and memorabilia honoring wrestlemania's 40-year history oh my god it's gonna be so good so apparently this is going to be on Sunday, April 7th, and it will be live on their YouTube channel, Facebook, X, Twitch, and TikTok. Now, I think there is a real good chance we will do a live stream for this because it's on the Sunday. Um, I, I'm so open to doing a live stream for this. So I think there's a real good chance that we will. There's the slammy look and Cody tweeting out uh, information, the article on it. So Edward, shout out to you. Bailey responded. So there we go. That was Bailey's response when she heard the news about the uh, slammies coming back. And Kathy Kelly, Big E will be the hosts on April 7th, as we said. Kathy Kelly said the most prestigious award show in sports entertainment is back, y'all. The Slammies was always one of my favorite yearly episodes of WWE programming. To say I'm excited to help bring it back would be a massive understatement. And it's even more of an honor to co-host with Big E. Samantha Irvin, yes. Thought she might have put a queen in there as well, but she didn't. That's okay. Hey, look, social star of the year. We will have a look at who's nominated for what, but social star of the year, Grayson, Logan, Drew, Chelsea Green, Liv Morgan, and there's Dijak saying ratio of the year. Dijak not impressed that he was not uh, up for this award. Social star of the year. He's been amazing as well. He's been amazing. He definitely should be up for this award. I mean, maybe some of his antics have been a little bit more 2024 than 2023, but I can't see why you would not have him as a nominee. I really can't. I mean, he's been amazing, so... 
I'll tell you what we'll do, actually. Let's go full screen. We'll go full screen and we'll have a look at the Slammy nominees. So these are the categories. You can vote for this right now on WWE.com. At the top, you'll see a link and it will take you to the Slammies. So female superstar of the year, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Bailey, EO and Becky. Male superstar of the year, Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, Seth freaking Rollins, Gunther, and Logan Paul. Best entrance, this is tricky. Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, Bianca Belair, Seth freaking Rollins, Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch, The Rock, Dominic Mysterio, WrestleMania 39. Return of the year, this is easy. CM Punk, The Rock, Nia Jax, Randy Orton, and Naomi. Faction of the year, Judgment Day, Alpha Academy, Imperium, Bloodline, Damage Control. Rivalry of the year, Seth Freakin Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. Dirty Dom against Ray. Bianca Belair versus Damage Control. R Truth versus Judgment Day. NXT Superstar of the Year, Elia Dragunov. Carmelo Hayes, Lyra Valkyria, Tiffany Stratton, Bron Breaker. Match of the Year, Bad Bunny against Damian Priest. Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn. Gunther versus Chad Gable. Asuka versus Bianca versus Charlotte. Or Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. OMG moment of the year. Rey Mysterio punches Dirty Dom. CM Punk returns to WWE. EO Sky cashes in Money in the Bank contract. Rock slaps Cody Rhodes. Damage Control turns on Bailey. Cody Rhodes slaps The Rock. Social star of the year. Grayson Waller, Logan Paul, Drew McIntyre, Chelsea Green, Liv Morgan. And then the last one, breakout superstar of the year, Jey Uso. I know that we're talking about him going solo, but this is the same Jey Uso that's been around for like 13 years. <laughs> Jey Uso, uh, Tiffany Stratton, Pretty Deadly, Dragon Lee, L.A. Knight. So uh, there we go. That is the complete list. I know that uh, there might be some of you out there that want to get like my thoughts on it, our thoughts on it. Uh, I think what I'll do is save it because we've got so much to go through in this video um it's probably better to give it its own video so i think on sunday we'll do a whole slammy's video and we'll give it its own space so uh yes big news great news so pleased they're back right lots and lots here of look at all this merch so fantasy book a podcast shout out to you uh wwe shop i told you so head to wwe shop and check out bailey's new t-shirt not a big fan of this sort of tie-dye effect to be honest i mean it might work for bailey but um yeah i can't say i'm crazy about that but that's bailey's new shirt jordan shout out to you family above all the new roman rain shirt don't forget if you go to euro shop you can use days 15 to say 15 percent there was a new code though that seemed to drop yesterday which was was it superstar 20 it was in yesterday's unseen and you can save 20 percent but i don't know when that starts and i don't know when that finishes so try codes just try them all and see you know get honey that might help you out Honey, that finds some good codes, doesn't it? Although, you know, Euroshop days 15, yeah. Uh, Dijak said, my face when I'm snubbed for WWE social star of the year. There's his face. But there's the shirt. Ah! Look at this. Do you remember he designed his own shirt design after we couldn't find a Dijak shirt? There he is, man, with his own shirt. This guy is the best. Is the best. Dijak is the best. So I don't know why he's not nominated for this. I don't know if we can write his name in. I, I, you know, I feel like we should. There should be an other. There should be a, a, an option where you can type in a name at the bottom. But he's been robbed. He's been robbed. I don't even think he's up for best NXT superstar either as well. That doesn't seem to bother him. though. <laughs> thinking about it that doesn't bother him he's more bothered about not being social star of the year but uh there he is wearing his shirt man amazing 
Right, look at this. We've got some new figures that have been shown. This was crazy. You had to go to Mattel Creations and then watch a video on this website, Mattel Creations. And this is where this stuff isn't going to be in shops. You have to go to that website to get these items. So this first one is Million Dollar Man, right? And Ricky the Dragon Steamboats. So uh, a two-pack of both of those then we've got these retro new gen four pack with Shawn michaels heartbreak kids isaac yankum alondra blaze and british bulldog so four pack of retros new i don't know why but we've got new imperium elite two pack coming soon so you can get uh, look brilliant don't they look at giovanni and giovanni looks amazing that big doesn't look bad i think that giovanni looks great but uh imperium as a two-pack burp man the one that got me oh i've got to buy it we'll see it in a sec uh here it is look do you remember we were talking about a fanatics exclusive and word was it was going to be the usos it is the usos i think this is different to the one that is in the shops but uh this is the next fanatics exclusive that just dropped so pump the music uh, Pop WWE Superstar Jey Uso and Pop WWE Superstar Jimmy Uso are entering the ring as Fanatics exclusive two-packs commemorating their iconic WrestleMania 39 moments. What's your favorite WWE moment? So you can get this here, I believe, on that little link. So there we go, a Fanatics exclusive. Very cool. But this is the one I'm excited for. Superstar Billy Graham, Harley Race, Muhammad Ali, Gorilla Monsoon, the Territory Era. Oh. And look, you get the old school WWE Championship from the 70s, the one that Dusty Rhodes tried to win. And you've got this uh, NWA Championship, the real world championship. Uh, this is when these two faced off. We, we actually did... The WWE champion taking on the NWA champion back in the day. It happened a few times, actually. Bob Backlund did it as well. But here, so Harley Race against superstar Billy Graham on the one side. And in the same pack, you get Muhammad Ali uh, and Gorilla Monsoon in wrestling gear. So if you are a fan of that older stuff, you know, from the 70s, psh, mate, how are you going to turn this down? I'm not. I'm definitely getting that. I'm so excited. So, uh, Francis Gameplays, thank you. Check out this elite figure set that was revealed a couple of hours ago. I know you love Legends. I do love Legends. And Champions. I do love Championships. This set is called The Legends of the Territory Era Elite 4-Pack. Muhammad Ali, Gorilla Monsoon, Harley Race. Superstar Elite, that's me. That's just me. This, everything about this is me. This is a must-buy. Must. It's a must. So, I'm so excited for that so excited right done 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 let's go what have we got i don't know how much we got in here actually oh my god oh my god right here's bailey <laughs> look at the laughing her head off <laughs> i don't get what this is but i love it all the same that is bailey out of context so, uh, Mark, thank you. Uh, Isamar says hello from the USA. Uh, so here, look, we've got uh, Asuka beating up Goldberg. He deserves it as well. After the comments that uh, he made where he was like, some Japanese girl beat my undefeated streak, Asuka or something. Yeah. Choke him out. Choke him out, Asuka. Choke him. Make him tap, Asuka. Yeah. Look at him loser let's go uh harry said this is great oh do you know what harry i'm gonna have to save this one this is great and it deserves to be looked at it's like uh wrestlers falling over so i'm gonna have to move that into the next one because i can see we've got 16 minutes and i really don't want to be going over an hour i've said before i think those kind of things mondays and fridays they're just not the day for those kind of things because we have so much to talk about with raw and SmackDown, that they probably stand a better chance of getting into Unseen on, like, Saturday, Sunday, 
even a Tuesday with NXT, but certainly a Wednesday, certainly a Thursday. But um, yeah, I'll try and get to it tomorrow. Uh, Roman Reigns takes aim at CM Punk. And here was Drew McIntyre's response. Look, so uh, these two rival gangs coming together in harmony. Uh, Ariana Grace said, remember, if you are coming to NXT Sanford tonight, please shower with soap before arriving. Thanks so much for your understanding. <laughs> Demon Balor ate my son. What? What? Demon Balor ate my son. Tweeted out by Finn Balor. Uh, Mitchell tagged me in this, but they've now deleted it for some reason. So we'll never know what that was. Uh, Zoe Stark said, it took me a second to figure out what it meant, but I also hate things like that. So Shayna Baszler said, after a couple of days on the talk, it has come to my attention that 99% of people don't know what POV actually means. POV. So um, that is from their perspective, isn't it? Isn't that, doesn't that mean from their perspective? I'm with Zoe. I hate things like that. Uh, Alan said, so true. Uh, Tony and Jim looking like they can get you an incredible deal on a mattress. <laughs> point of view. It just, in my head, it, my head just yelled, point of view. P-O-V. There we go. Mattress. Uh, Ava says, who? Let's click on this, shall we? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hey, a little bit of something for the ladies. So, Aina Rain photographed by Jakara Jackson, and Ava says, who? Aina Rain. Do you know what I said? I said that is one letter away from a Titanic-level disaster. If you know, you know. Something for, the, something for the ladies again. We'll get to it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. Uh, it's Bryn again said, keep these signs coming. Dijak said, what's that? Push Dijak. And he's not even up for social star of the year. It's an absolute disgrace. Ah, oh, so many people talking about this. Alex, thank you. AJ Styles hasn't taken down his Christmas decorations. This is why um, LA Knight tried to show up because he wanted to help. Look, what the flip? He hasn't took down his Christmas decorations. So I uh, saw lots of people talking about that. Loads of people asking why hasn't he took him down. He's going to have to answer for that. Alex, uh, again, shout out to you. The crowd singing happy birthday, Grayson. <laughs> Milwaukee, baby. We ain't cold. We on fire right now. We got, we got the OC today. They still work here. They still work here. Come on. Too sweet down on the boys. Too sweet. Too sweet down on the boys. And they did start singing happy birthday. The OC, they still work here. Uh, no one is ready for Asuka. There is Asuka beating up Goldberg. And Jim said, look what Asuka just retweeted. I actually don't know if Asuka retweeted this, but it would be hilarious if she did. If Asuka did retweet this, that would be brilliant. But I didn't get a chance to have a look. But uh, yeah, that's very cool. Triple H Thoughts said Cody referenced his bullet cufflinks and was greeted with silence. Talk about no pop. That is true, actually. He uh, checked to see if he had his bullet cufflinks on and he made that reference and no one seemed to react when he was talking about factions obviously he's talking about bullet club but um you know I, I think there are a lot of people that only watch wwe and there's no problem with that you know there's a lot of kids in the crowds you know they ain't gonna know bullet club if it slapped them in the face talking of slapping you in the face hey enjoy <laughs> Look at it. Oh, that's called the uh, anus cutter. You know, like how you can get a cutter. You can do a cutter uh, in wrestling. That's the anus cutter. Uh, it's very different and it's uh, a lot more painful. No messing around, man. 
Uh, I, I would like, I would try and go even bigger because I know that some of you really want to get in. I was going to say get in there. I know some of you really want to get in there. So I would try and go bigger, but we are also running out of time. So I can't really. But I'll show it one more time. Here we go. Oh, look at it. Well, there we go. If you did wonder where William Hensey was tonight, normally in our live stream, but uh, doing this instead. So uh, there we go. Right, we've got other. Can we do this in 10 minutes? Probably not. Right, uh, BBC will be releasing a documentary on Bruiser Brody. The BBC has produced an eight-part series on Bruiser Brody called The Ballad of Bruiser Brody. Now, as pointed out by Matt, this is a podcast on BBC Sounds, not a documentary. Mm, I think you can you still be a documentary if you're uh you can be a doc you can be a documentary, can't you? Uh but it, it, like it's just not visual. It's audio only, unfortunately. But this is gonna be a whole thing on Bruiser Brody. Uh Humble Wrestling said apparently Cody Rhodes gave away both issues. We spoke about that. Look! Look! Recent picture of Rick the Model Martell. I haven't seen Rick Martell in years. Years. You know, the dude with the arrogance. Getting pink, came down with like tennis racket, you know, tennis uh, like sweater over and everything. That's Rick the Model Martell. I, he could walk past, he could slap me in the face and I wouldn't recognize him. Wow, I was stunned by that. I was stunned. Right, uh, Bray Wyatt's WWE Hall of Fame induction was held back due to the upcoming Peacock documentary. This had something to do with the decision not to induct Wyatt into the Hall of Fame this year. This is the year uh, they're doing the big documentary for him. I think that's acceptable, personally. I think this year, documentary, everyone talks about Bray. Next year, put him in the Hall of Fame. Everyone talks about Bray. So you actually get Bray being spoken about for a few years, you know? Documentary this year, Hall of Fame induction the year after that. And then we'll have to find something after that as well. So, um, yeah, maybe we do something with Bo the year after that. And, and Bray gets mentioned uh, for the year after that as well. So for me, rather than putting all our eggs in one basket... We've got the Bray documentary. We're putting in the US Express. That's going to be a lovely moment for the family. I'm sure Bray will be mentioned in his dad's Hall of Fame induction speech. But uh, then it means he can go in next year. Uh, yeah, this was interesting. I'm the head of the table. I'm the tribal chief. And I'm about to be a six-time WrestleMania main event. Six time. The best to ever do it, the greatest of all time. I'm about to walk into Dallas. I'm gonna wreck everyone and then I'm leaving. And if anybody ever wants to step up, you already know what's gonna happen. You're gonna get smashed. And I'm gonna smash whoever steps up on the next day. And then the next week, the same process, the next month, and then the next year. That's who I am. So I don't know if that's a new advert. I've never seen that before. I do love this shot, though. Look at him at the head of the table. That's real cool, isn't it? That's real cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if that's new. I don't know where that's come from. It was doing the rounds today. So um, there we go. Head of the table. So Roman's legacy. I have never seen that clip before. Right, Russell Purist reporting, if given the chance to bring other guys in, of course, I've spoke with Malachi Black a few times. I've spoken to CM Punk. It'd be great to have Chad Gable or Bron Breaker or any number of people with amateur backgrounds. Charlie Dempsey mentioned as well. Please take Maxine Dupree. That's what I want to see. I want to see Maxine Dupree in blood sports. Right, let's go. Let's go. That would bring some legitimacy to her. Uh, Zelina Vega said, uh, wake up to reality. Nothing ever goes as planned. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just like really dark. It's like it's the selfish intent. Um, you know, it's everywhere. You oh, Let me go big. Let me go. Let me go full screen. 
Wake up to reality. Nothing ever goes as planned in this accursed world. The longer you live, the more you realize that the only things that truly exist in this reality are merely pain, suffering, and futility. Listen, everywhere you look in this world, wherever there is light, there will always be shadows to be found as well. Jeez. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope everything's okay with Zelina. <laughs> Someone check on Zelina, would you? She's not. She's not. Uh, not seemingly not in a good place. Uh, Becky said Kevin Patrick's WWE departure was heartbreaking, and everyone loved him. He was always trying to get better. He would find talent and ask them what they wanted him to say about them and take notes. She even described Patrick as like a brother to her. <laughs> Uh, X Pac put this picture up after Goldberg's comments. So uh, that's him. Scott Hall with Asuka backstage all doing the two sweets. Uh, so uh, interesting timing. Indy Hartwell used to work at Toys R Us and loved it when people called in about WWE product. I knew I liked this girl. She's one of us. She's one of us. She used to work in Toys R Us. And uh, used to enjoy talking to people about the WWE products. How amazing. Imagine buying stuff from Toys R Us being served by Indy Hartwell. Amazing. Look at this! Yes, she came through. Koji Ko, thank you. Do you remember Mercedes? Doug, when's your birthday? I'm going to get you a new TV. It was in, I think, yesterday's Unseen. Ah, there it is, look. There it is. Elite crew for life. Look, I'm top tier. All the standards are set. So, uh, and he's got his CEO Boston shirt on as well. Uh, and there's his new T. That was quick, man. We only looked at this yesterday and boom, he's got his new TV. So uh, amazing. A story in two photos. Hashtag CEO. Oh, I'm so pleased for him. He deserves a new TV. Uh, Rebecca Quinn, the man, is coming around in the bookstores. So uh, there we go. That's where she's going to be doing her book signing. I did wonder if she'd be in Florida, but sadly not. But she's in all these places. A few of them have already sold out, though. Read the book. See the man. Uh, Charlotte put a message out saying that she's back. She said, I'm back. I don't think she's back. Um, I think that uh, her progress is going very well, though. But, um, yeah, she's been putting up a lot of footage of her in the gym doing the work. So she hasn't wrestled since December. Read more in the link below. Just a simple message. Picture of her working out with the words, I'm back. But I don't know quite what that means, to be honest, because I'm not I don't think she's back. I wouldn't be expecting her for months, to be honest. It's only been about 11 weeks. She's meant to be out for like ages. So, that, you know, three months would be mental. Uh, WWE are filming matches for WWE Speed tonight or last night, whenever you're watching this, which is interesting. Oh, and the last thing. Oh, we've got two minutes. Let's go. And it's only five seconds. Oh, my God, this is the best. Uh, so uh, someone hitting an F5 in store is crazy. Hey, yo. Listen to this. Oh, hang on. So he's got him up on his shoulders. F5. Oh. Hey, yo. I have to mute the first bit because there's... Oh. Ah, hey, swearing. That is badass, man. It seems to put him on top of some plastic box. He F5s him onto a plastic box. Crazy. Crazy. So there we go. We are going to come in under the hour. We've still oh, we've got loads of time. How are you? You're keeping all right. Uh, we've got uh, still like an hour and 20 minutes according to this clock here. So we did it. I'm so pleased. I never want these to go over an hour because, I mean, that's a hell of a commitment for people to be doing this every day, putting out like, you know, content this long. So much to talk about in this one, though. Um, I hope you got a lot from it. I hope you feel all up to speed that is, that is literally everything I know right now. So uh, there we go. Uh, we will have another one of these tomorrow. And obviously, we'll try and follow up on a few bits and bobs here and there and see what else is going down. But yeah, big thank you for all the support. Really appreciate it as always. Uh, and I really hope you continue to enjoy 
these videos. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Bye for now.